Hello, friends and families. Welcome back to Homeschool Together. We are on a new week of mm -hmm. our uh, ancient civilizations, a uh, grand tour of the world. <laughs> it's been a wonderful journey. Now, we were in South America last week, and we've kind of migrated up to Mesoamerica, the land between the two big lands, basically. <laughs> if you remember what we're doing, Meso Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers. This is the land between the two la land masses, so this is in the yeah, middle. That's why it was Meso... Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, because oh, Meso's middle. Me oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just putting it together now, y'all, on live on video, so... But where this is, where we were focused mainly was kind of in that if you know that kind of that horseshoe section of Mexico, right around the Yucatan, that kind of mm -hmm. um, bends up towards where modern day um, Mexico City is. And I was focusing mainly on three, three groups of people, and one of them I'm going to just absolutely butcher, so I already apologize. Um, but it was the Mayans, the Olmecs, and the Tenochtitlan, Teotihuacan people. Yes, the people who lived in the basin uh, where that is now Mexico City. Um, and that was kind of uh, helped us with some of our focus. We focused on art this week um, because art really had like a dramatic effect. Um, there, we'll talk a little bit about mm -hmm. this with the Olmecs, but really, really uh, resonated a lot with my kids. And then we talked a lot about the missing lake because one of the things that we like to do mm -hmm. is whenever we go to an area, I pull out Google Maps and say, here we are. This is where we're <laughs> going to do it. And the big thing was like, there's the pictures in the books are all about this lake. And like, I'm trying to find the lake. I can't find the lake. I feel like a crazy person. And I'm like, where's the lake? I'm like, oh, that's right. Mexico City used to be in, is basically in the basin of a lake that used to be there. It's no longer there. Oh, interesting. And it, and it took us on this great discovery <laughs> of trying to find the missing lake. I thought I was a crazy person, but it turned out that. Because it was a big lake. You it's were a like. Gigantic lake. You're like, uh, where is it? Where's this lake in the middle of Mexico? I cannot find it. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we did. That's what we focused on. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the book. So we had a, an extensive discussion about poppy and ragweed. Uh, last week. Right. And uh, we now know that of the two books, Ragweed, mm, Poppy is the one. Poppy is the one. We should have known. I mean, you know, Emily okay. knows her stuff. Uh, and we didn't ever say that she didn't. We just thought, hey, we like a whole series. Um, so let's start at the beginning kind of thing. Yeah. But Poppy turned out to be absolutely fantastic. Poppy is an absolute gem. Um, basically, as I said before, I do not like <coughs> anthropomorphized animals, but she has to move past this. I'm going to have to move past it because I'm starting to get waves and waves of anthropomorphized. And next we're reading Charlotte's Web, so you're going to have to like be prepared. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to like anthropomorphized animals, people. <laughs> we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> They're um, changing you one book at a time. If you could imagine a mouse, this soft and, you know, emotionally damaged young, young woman oh, who yeah. just watched her boyfriend get swooped away by Mr. Orcax, Mr. The Orcax, owl. the owl. Um, and she goes through this huge journey to become essentially uh, a medieval knight, as you can see here on the front of the uh, book. My daughter absolutely adored this book. Um, Poppy is a strong female protagonist, uh, learns, you know, all these things that she feels like she's, she's ruined. Mm -hmm. And through that arc, she finds herself and battles this great evil and be, is able to return home. The classic hero's journey returns home um, having rediscovered herself to, you know, bringing forth the goods um, to save her, her family, her extended family. Um, and it wraps up with kind of a spoiler about the, the subsequent book, which is Poppy and Rye. Spoilers, Rye's her husband. Ooh, we didn't learn, we didn't know about that. So that, that was like the last chapter. So if you read this book and you skip the last chapter, it's like two pages it won't spoil the next book, which is where Poppy meets Rye. Um, right, which our daughter is listening to right now on audiobook, on audiobook because she loved this so much. Would you say, what would you say about for sensitive kiddos? Because there is some, you know, mice are eaten and their bones are hocked back up and that kind of, you know. <laughs> that, is all, that is all in the very beginning of the book. And after that, it's just scenes of peril. But I can tell you what my daughter... While she was folding clothes when we finished the book, um, she, she was folding the clothes and I was working, you know, I was reading, you know, she's doing the work and I'm here educating. <laughs> and she was sitting there just cheering on Poppy the last like two or three chapters. She was absolutely riveted. She was like just sitting there with like pants. What's Poppy going to do? What's Poppy going to do? <laughs> um, it was a little sensitive at the beginning, obviously, with the <laughs> the, the, the rapid death of Ragweed. Um, but you, there was a couple of things where they talked about like, the owl not being able to digest ragweed's earring. And to, you could probably like do some inline edits if yeah. you have a particularly sensitive kiddo, but there wasn't anything after that. No, no. Okay. And the rest of the book was pretty, I mean, I would say vanilla in, in a lot of respects with respect to like, you know, you know, icky things. Um, there's a conversation at the end of a log where a 
um, a certain animal uh, tends to go to the bathroom. They had a conversation back there, and shoot, they were commenting about how it was stinky. But other than that, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> hey, it's you know, it's the forest. Yeah, it's the forest. But anyway, a winner for our yeah, family. Absolute winner, and I wouldn't mind rereading this book uh, in the future. It was well written. I, I liked the flow of this one better. I, I noticed, like in Ragweed, it was a little bit more difficult to read because. I don't know, just the way that it was written, it was just a little bit more challenging. This just flowed when you're reading, sitting down, and you're just cranking through chapters. Super easy. Um, I think we powered through the last 50 pages in about a, uh, 40 minutes or so. It was a really, really, really brisk read. Yep. yep. So this was a this was a good one. And and what's nice about this, there's a map at the beginning of the forest, Dimwood Forest, where the houses are located, the road, the um, the the creek, where everybody's home was. And it was really nice to go back to the map and like point out where we are in the story. It was really cool. It's a nice little feature. So that would be something to note if you're going to read this on Kindle that you mm -hmm. might want to go online and print out the map at the beginning so you could yeah. reference back. So it's kind of hard to do. I mean, you can bookmark and stuff, but it's not as easy. So okay. anyway, Poppy, good one. And then they, they have, there's like seven books in this series. So our mm -hmm. daughter is starting to read through them on audiobook. So if your kids really enjoy it, there can be a long tale for them to enjoy with this Absolutely. One. This was a really good book. Well worth the read. Well worth the purchase. It's one of those books that I feel like should be on the shelf um, to enjoy. Especially... Well, we're trying to build our library. Build our library with Build Your Library. Thank you, Emily. Mm -hmm. um, the other part of it, too, was the Peregrine's Journey. Now, this was part of the nature study, mm -hmm. um, but the, the curriculum called out this book to be reread multiple times. Like, it was actually explicitly stated, reread this book three or four times. And then talk about what's happening as you're rereading it and basically it's just the story of a, pe uh, a peregrine falcon going from uh, migrating from alaska all the way down to um, argentina mm. and and the journey that the bird makes and all the various stops and all the dangers um along the way makes a stop in seattle which was kind of funny to, to you know to, to nibble on some pigeons um mm. but still it was she made a stop in seattle and it was just really really cool to see this you know this journey of this of uh, this bird. Well, they journeyed through the area that and you were studying. What right? was really cool, and I'll show you a little bit of the art that comes with the curriculum. Um, you're you're meant to try to track her journey uh, all the way through, and then you pass through Mesoamerica. So it's nice to kind of couple mm -hmm. the two together, and then you do some um, a little bit. Of, that's not as strong artwork as we, mm -hmm. we normally like to see, but um, you got to have to do some fact sheets on the pigeon, and so. You're asking your learner on to... On the pigeon or the peregrine? On the peregrine falcon. On, not, not the, the pigeon, pigeon. it ate. I, no, no, no. It's a set of poor pigeons. Had not, didn't see what was coming. It was a... Yeah. So this is a good migration story. If you are unable to find this book at your library, mm -hmm. you might check out Migrations for the Monarch Butterfly. Mm -hmm. I know there's a few different books on that. It's going to go through the same area. Yeah, and a lot of the Monarch Butterflies in North America will uh, end in, in Mexico. It's, it's, a very, right. it's a very famous migration, and you're absolutely right. That's a good So one if, if this isn't at your library, you might think about subbing that. Yep, absolutely. Just off the absolutely. cuff. Um, so going into it, we'll start here. Um, the American People's Eyewitness Anthologies. Now this is a double book. Yeah, we, right? talk, we talked about, about this, this in, in the last week. So the first part is um, uh, Native Americans, but the second part that you're really looking for is Aztec Inca Maya. Mm -hmm. So when you look for this at your library, you're looking for Aztec Inca Maya. We just mm -hmm. happen to have this double book. Exactly. And the very beginning helped us with some of the ancient Andean empires, but then it moves very quickly into... Um, into the peoples of Mesoamerica. Yep. So it's going to give you a really good overview with some of the artifacts from this. Um, and, and this is going to come back later when you're, you know, you're doing Incas and Aztecs, um, but it's going to give a good, you know, good start to talking about farming and some other things. So Absolutely. It, it was difficult because you, you were kind of covering a, a, a lot of people in, in this one week. Like you're talking mm -hmm. about the Mayans, you're talking about the Toltecs, you're talking about the Teotihuacan people. Uh, the Olmecs, you had a bunch of people and it really felt underserved in some respect because you were covering so much. It was, if you want to blend this with the previous week, if you're, if you're doing planning uh, for this curriculum, the, the Nazca um, study from last week was a little thin. You could almost do that in like maybe two or three days and then extend out the Mayan work because it is such a, you know, a prevalent culture, very mm -hmm. famous. Um, you can think about kind of doing some horse trading on these two weeks and, and expanding here and there if there's a certain area of interest or if you like, say your family is going to go somewhere or if you have some uh, cultural heritage in these regions, definitely think about maybe expanding this week a little bit. It felt a little too cramped. Like it, where last week was, oh, was little, you know, we had a lot of free time. This week felt like I was, I didn't know which, which area to really focus on. Um, obviously we made a couple of decisions, but 
uh, you know, if you have some affinity in this area, you may want to expand a little bit more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, going into kind of a theme of books that we've, we've been constantly recommending, uh, you wouldn't want to be a Mayan soothsayer. What was really cool is um, in the books, uh, um, especially in the History Quest book over there, um, they talk about the Mayan people um, and, and the kind of the, the sacrifice and, and human sacrifice element there. They, talk, they kind of downplay that a little bit as it wasn't as big as we think it was. Um, but there was this really nice element of talking about kind of their religion, their thinking, their culture, the technology and the science and the knowledge that, that they had developed during this time was amazing. Um, and it, I think it, you, you kind of get it. It's underserved the fact that how well they, they, they were able to map the skies, mm -hmm. predict eclipses, do math. It was incredible that these people were able to do these things. Um, and thinking about it in the contemporaries on the other side of the world, um, they were able to emerge, you know, there was a, they didn't have as much time to develop these technologies as mm -hmm. other people in the world. So it was very impressive that they were able to do this. And they, I think this book helped kind of bring out that a little bit more. So. Yeah, this is a really nice overview. And these You yeah. Wouldn't Want to Be books are so engaging they're for so kids. Great. They're so affordable that mm -hmm. I think they're a great addition to your, your library. You can get them usually really cheaply. So uh, we highly recommend Absolutely. this one. So uh, one we missed this week, but uh, one to recommend. I, I briefly read through it. I just didn't have time. It was called The Land of Books. This is in a vein of, I think um, if you've gone through the Around the World journey and maybe you, you picked up one of our resource guides uh, that talked about the Native American books um, for the North America section, there are a number of like First People Native American books that really try to dive super deep into the culture and the folklore mm -hmm. and even bringing in the language. And this is one of those great examples of bringing in the language. And I can tell you what, it's very complex. And what's really nice and helpful is that at the end of these books, um, this one, notably, I, I know there was a couple other th others that we did mm -hmm. when we did the Around the World Journey. They help give you a glossary and help you decode the words and actually how to say them. And they can be very challenging, the, um, just phonetically and grammatically, just saying the words can be challenging. This is really good. They do they really help you with that. And they help you mm -hmm. really do a deep dive into the kind of the culture and the artwork. This paired well with the, the video movie recommendation um, that we'll make a little bit later. Right. So this is a land of books. This is by Duncan Tana Tiu. Yeah. I'm probably not saying that right. Lo siento. Um, <laughs> but this is the same author that wrote Danza. And yes. he wrote um, uh, Dear Primo. If you did our Around the World study, he does a lot of great books based in Mexican heritage. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's a great author. So if you ever see anything by him, uh, some of his books are, this was the only one that I found that was really appropriate for Maya that I could find at our library. But uh, anything by him is always really interesting. And I love the, well, kind of and the writing. And, yeah, the writing and the artwork uh, plays a big role in all the curriculum stuff, the uh, history class and a lot of the other reading and some of the videos you'll end up seeing. Mm -hmm. And this really helps kind of like accentuate that and talk about the writing. The, you know, they had a kind of a hieroglyphic way of writing. And that really helped to kind of elucidate that. Right. The other one that they didn't have at our library, but the feathered serpent and the five sons is a Mesoamerican creation myth. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that one in the show notes too, because I think we've seen that before, but it wasn't available at our library. So, yep. so honorable mention. Yeah, um, these are good. These are good books. Yep, absolutely. Um, first, we went into a lot of art, so that was a big thing. And with the Olmecs, you had this really cool kind of, you know, we all know about, um, you know, Rapa Nui, Easter Island, um, with the with the large heads that you know mm -hmm. were kind of buried in the hillside. Um, there was a there was kind of a sister civilization in the Olmecs, kind of right in that bottom crook of Mexico, right in that heart of that kind of this rainy, swampy area where they also did these large head figurines that were seven, eight, nine, ten feet high. And they were they're unearthing them because they're kind of buried in these swamps and everything. Mm -hmm. And so we um, first of all, we did, a you know, kind of a nice little deep dive into, you know, what they look like and pulled up some pictures. So here's a good example of what they look mm -hmm. like. This is a nice restored one. You can imagine this is about nine feet tall. And so you can imagine how tall like I'm somewhere right in here, right at the eyes. And really, really cool, really beautiful. A couple of nice, really videos of you know about the Olmecs, mm -hmm. and there's a nice Nat Geo video, a nice documentary on the Olmecs as well. A little too shaky, Cami, for me, but it was it was pretty good. That I watched about 10, 15 minutes of it with my daughters. It was really cool. So we went ahead and grabbed some air clay. Well, here I'll I'll lead with the better art. The better art. My my oldest, the tongue has fallen off, but she made her own. No, no, this was. This is the oldest. Oh, this, oh, this and is this, hers. Okay. And I helped the youngest make hers as well. Yeah, the little one. The little one, and then I made mine a little bit bigger, like daddy yeah. one. So, so we had a good time. We sat around, just you know, I pull, I printed off the mm -hmm. the image, and we all and tried. This was like 
pretty close. Like, look oh, yeah. at this art. Those are pretty close. Yeah. Not too shabby, hon. Hey, listen, uh, you know, Bob Ross ain't got nothing on me. You know, come on. Um, it was a it was a lot of fun. We were able to sit around, and it was the first time I let my youngest play with air clay. Normally, she if we do air clay, mm -hmm. she does the play doh, um, but she really wanted to do the air clay. I and think it's great. It, it does fun. take a few days to dry. Oh, so. Especially the big one right over there. That took like four or five days to dry. It was always spongy for about three or four days. Yeah, but the, the you know, the Crayola Air Clay, while not like the greatest it's material, cheap. it's so affordable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Absolutely. we'll put a link in the show notes to the kind of air clay that yep. we use, but and you can get these huge tubs of it. Absolutely. And we, we studied, obviously, the Mayans, and so they had pyramids. So we went right from, you know, Egypt with the pyramids, and we came across and did more pyramids. Um, I'll, I will keep my ancient aliens comments uh, to myself. Um, but obviously Chichen Itza, we had just kind of a Lego journey and just kind of had her build it and a little step pyramid with the little steps. And yeah, I, lo I love the top even. And, and, that's, and that's what it looked like. It had kind of this like yeah. top. Of the, yeah, it was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Whenever yeah. we can get Lego involved, I think it, we're it, doing it. It was a nice little product. And again, you know, we have the Usborne um, World History book mm -hmm. um, and you can just pull it open to, you know, whatever you're trying to do. But in this case, it had some of the Mayan temples and I went ahead and just opened it up and said, okay, here's your Legos. Here's your plate make me a, 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 yeah. a temple pyramid and she did and it was really cool and she yeah. had a great time it's a really fun project to absolutely do. um video wise we had on netflix there's the maya and the three which is kind of i think it's um it was produced by guillermo del toro so if you ever if you saw the book of life it's a similar uh, yeah. style very similar done but it's very accentuated and um, exaggerated uh, sizings and, and heads and, and waist and bodies. Gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeously it's made. Gorgeous. Um, we we only I only saw um, part of the first episode. Yeah, our daughters have episodes. watched. They've actually watched this many times through. Right, right? but they just rewatched it and yeah. they love it. Um, I think it's a little bit violent, yeah. but um, it's kind of like it's like magical. It's very magical. Yeah, yeah. It's like very it's very fantasy. A lot of folklore. Um, harkens to a lot of the, that like ancient culture, Mayan and early culture, yeah. um, just in the styling, like the artwork that's on the, you know, like the breastplates and the hel helmet gear and everything. Just very beautiful, well it's worth watching. wonderful to look if, at. If you have some younger learners, maybe that's not as appropriate. For my for my oldest, she loves this show. She would she's adored it for a long time. Yeah, I mean they've probably watched through it at least like three times. Yep. So I haven't seen the whole thing, but our kids absolutely love it. And then we watched the movie. We, not with the kids. No, <laughs> we decided because we're trying to you know bring in adult you know learning here too. So we decided to watch Apocalypto, yep. which we've never seen. It, it's on Prime right now mm -hmm. on Amazon Prime. Um, and all I had heard about it really was that it was in native language. Yep. So it was in there, that language, and it was extremely hyper-violent. <laughs> this is all that I knew about it. Confirmed both of those, yes. Confirmed. Yep, that's very true. Hyper-violent, so if that bothers you. Um, but it, it was quite good. I, I was a little I was a little heart-wrenching kind of as a, as a mother. Yeah. There was some... There was a kind of a like a massacre on this village, and um, there, there was some things in there with Kids. children, and I my heartstrings were yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. They're breaking point. There's some but, warnings there, yes. So you know, a little bit of caution. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think I'd watch the movie again. But it's well worth watching. But I think it was really, uh, yeah. I I and, and it's not a perfectly accurate depiction mm -hmm. of their culture right there's a lot of in there about the human sacrifice mm -hmm, part of it mm -hmm. which was a component of their culture but there's a lot of other stuff going on mm -hmm. with the you know the calendar and all the other mm -hmm. stuff um so not totally historically mm -hmm. accurate or anything but very interesting and That's i good. and it did spur us to look up a lot of things and go well how, how did they do this and what was that like yeah. and and just the 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 realism of the whole thing was no, I agree. really interesting. No, so we, we really enjoyed it. So that was Mesoamerica. I, I think we could spend a little bit more time um, if you want to think about that. We've already talked about that. Consider expanding mm -hmm. here a little bit, maybe spending an extra couple of days. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of great material online on YouTube to touch on it. We watched, uh, uh, actually, we, I, forgot, we forgot to mention that we watched uh, the Geo Geographics video, our, our our bald headed, big bearded uh, hmm, Brit geologics. Geo, geo it's geographics. I'll make sure to put that oh, correctly in the thing. Geologic. Okay. Anyway, I said geologics last time. I think it's really geographics. Anyway, yeah, so we'll we watched. We'll put the link. Just we, go to the show. We notes. watched a nice video on the missing lake and and the whole region and and you know the temples and this beautiful thing. They said when when the um, the Spanish conquistadors had come in. They had said the, the city was larger than Paris and more beautiful than Venice because it was kind of a, a city on the lake. And 
to think about this ancient culture having probably one of the largest cities in the world at the time, built on a lake with canals and pyramids and all this stuff, and none of it exists anymore. It's really, really kind of a heart wrenching because you wish that stuff was still there because you can go visit it and see the you know the history yeah. and everything. Um, but that started the quest on the missing lake, and they talked about oh, the lake and and how it was drained and all this type of stuff. And then we went on this like huge Google Maps tour of the whole region, looking for all the lakes and looking for you know they had the pictures in the in the in the book, and we were looking for those landmarks in on Google Maps, and we were able to find okay, there's those mountains. Oh, that's where that is. Okay, and then we we're kind of like drawing I, I cast it up on the tv and i'm kind of drawing with my finger where the lake would have been and then it's just this basin where it's just mexico city is just sprawling oh, right through really it. interesting it's really really interesting and we're kind of like putting where the temples were and everything up on the wall it was just it was very cool are you saying we should have made it out of rice krispies i'm hearing that we should have made another rice krispies should we have made it a rice krispie mm. missing lake tex tex coco i think it was called. maybe we yes. need to make like rice krispie acropolis or something mm. when we get to greece we're, we're, we're gonna have a what can we mold in rice krispies food. they were delicious y'all. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're gonna do more food related art <laughs> well, we dioramas had, we that had you a can friend eat. make rice krispies with cocoa puffs or cocoa krispies instead of regular rice krispies it was divine. You, you guys. It was very, very good. Okay, we're... we're, 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 we're I'm getting hungry now. We're getting hungry. <laughs> we'll let um, you all go, but thanks for joining next us. Next week, we are we are going back across the ocean yep. to Mesopotamia, out of Mesoamerica to Mesopotamia. We're going to talk about Babylon. Babylon and the whole Babylonian mm-hmm. Empire, yep. um, back between the, the two rivers, uh, Tigris and Euphrates. We're, it's very funny. We just keep getting, you know, like, here's Su- Sumeria, and then a little bit bigger is uh, Babylon, and then a little bit bigger is Assyria, and then here come the Persians, and it's all the same area. And so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be keep taking over the same area for the next couple of weeks. So it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to Babylon. We're gonna learn about those hanging gardens. Mm-hmm. Did they exist? We'll find out. <laughs> See you next week, guys.